Walt Whitman declared independence from the old world poetics. He freed his verse to play upon the page in an open-range celebration of the American individualistic democratic ethos, a rough yet artful combination of Jeffersonian esteem for the plain folk mixed with Hamiltonian respect for commerce and industry. Your teachers probably introduced you to his work through such poems as Song of Myself or O Captain, My Captain. But I'm here to tell you that if there's any one poem from Walt Whitman that you should read, it's Give Me the Splendid Silent Sun, a poem so unjustly neglected that it doesn't even have a Wikipedia article. Come on, what are we even doing? Give Me the Splendid Silent Sun was first published in Whitman's 1865 collection Drum Taps. But if you're like most people, you probably own it in the deathbed edition of Leaves of Grass. Give Me the Splendid Silent Sun is a short poem. It's roughly three pages long, and it's divided into two short parts. And there are at least two reasons why you should read this poem. Number one, it provides an easily digestible introduction to Whitman's poetic language. And number two, it is a triumphant expression of what we might call an urban idol. Walt Whitman is famous for being a poet of free verse. That is, his poetry eschews traditional poetic formalisms in favor of natural speech rhythms unconstrained by literary devices such as meter and rhyme. His poetry is also simple without being stupid, and his poems can be quite rollicking and boisterous. Reading Whitman is like having a few beers with that chatty friend of yours who is obsessed with and in love with everything, and it's quite infectious too. I find that on days when I read Whitman, my nighttime monologue as I lay in bed, it just rolls on and on in an enthusiastic wave of words, just like Whitman's poems. But just because Walt Whitman writes in free verse, this does not mean that he abandons all the poetic literary devices. Far from it. In Give Me the Splendid Silent Sun, for example, he relies heavily upon anaphora. Anaphora is the literary device wherein a poet will repeat a word or groups of words at the beginning of consecutive sentences, clauses, or phrases. So in Give Me the Splendid Silent Sun, in the first part, Whitman is extolling the virtues of the rural life, and he does this by repeating the titular phrase, Give me. Give me the splendid silent sun. Give me juicy autumnal fruit. Give me solitude. Give me nature. Give me again, O nature, your primal sanities. The fun aesthetics here are also quite good. Whitman sprinkles in a liberal yet judicious amount of alliteration and assonance, dollops of consonants too, but nothing that draws undue attention to itself. Just enough so that the democratic everyman's spirit of his language is elevated into something humbly heroic. So what we have when we read Whitman, and particularly in Give Me the Splendid Silent Sun, is poetic language that is energetic, evocative, direct, and yes, turbulent, which makes perfect sense given that this is a poem about New York City. Now, if you live in a big city, you've definitely had the urge to get out of the big city. Let's be real. And Walt Whitman has had this urge too. In fact, in Give Me the Splendid Silent Sun, the first part of the poem is about Whitman escaping the city to get into the country so his mind and spirit can be assuaged by the gentle comforts of country living. And he lists all these comforts, and they do sound quite nice. But even as he lists them, he says to himself eventually, While yet incessantly asking, still I adhere to my city. And it's at this point that he launches into what I previously called his urban idol. This is a poem that loves city life. This is not the dehumanizing metropole of Blake's London. There's no bleakness here. Neither is there any alienation, like what we find in the work of T.S. Eliot, particularly in the early poetry set in cities. Quite the contrary. Whitman here is joyous, basking in the experiential abundance that city life offers. He writes from the perspective that God created man in his own image, and that this creative spirit of the Godhead finds its most exquisite expression in the human creation of cities. Let's take a closer look to see what I mean. Oh, such for me. Oh, an intense life. Oh, full to repletion and varied. The life of the theater, barroom, huge hotel for me. 
the saloon of the steamer, the crowded excursion from me, the torchlight procession, the dense brigade bound for war with high-piled military wagons following, people, endless, streaming, with strong voices, passions, pageants, Manhattan streets with their powerful throbs, with the beating drums as now, the endless and noisy chorus, the rustle and clank of muskets, even the sight of the wounded. Manhattan crowds with their turbulent musical chorus, with varied chorus and light of the sparkling eyes. Manhattan faces and eyes forever for me. What more do you want? Give me the splendid silent sun serves as an impeccable introduction to the poetry of Walt Whitman. It's short, you can read it in one single sitting very easily, and it showcases Whitman's style, his exuberance, his joy, and his uniquely American individualistic democratic ethos. It's absolutely a poem that you should read. Now, if you've already read this poem, let me know what you think about it down in the comments. And if you haven't read it, I'll provide a link for you to read it, so you can come back and let me know also in the comments what you thought about it. But now, it's time for me to go. I'd like to thank you for spending your time with me today, and invite you to like this video and subscribe to the channel. I'm Brian E. Denton, and this is ELA+, Plus, your free guide to English studies and the English language arts. Until we meet again, keep reading, and take care of yourselves and others.